Hi folks, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Today my post is about GI bleeding. GI bleeding is a common topic that we deal with, especially in our field. It is a cause of many admissions to the hospital. And the goal today is to give you a sense of what causes it, how you can recognize it for yourself. As you know, the entire thought behind coffee series is to empower you with this knowledge so that you learn to manage both your health and any kind of disease conditions that the body can uh, be prone to, uh, that you manage them uh, with this knowledge. When we use the term GI bleeding, it can be either blood that's coming from the upper GI tract. Technically, when I say upper GI tract, what it refers to is anything from the mouth to the stomach. So there's the food pipe that goes down. You can see the diagram on the slide. There's the stomach and then there's the small bowel and the upper portion of the small bowel is included in this term upper GI bleeding. So today we'll focus more on this upper GI, so anything that is esophagus, stomach, uh, the initial portion of the small bowel is what we're talking about. The most common way it presents is as black tarry stool. Normally, of course, the stool color is can be brown, depending on what we eat, there's some color change, but black, sticky, tarry color stool, something similar to the color of my hair, is what we're talking about as black tarry stool. It's important, of course, to recognize that there are many things that we take that can cause the stool to become dark. Common among them is Pepto-Bismol, iron, sometimes spinach, etc. Uh, green uh, can cause the stool to become a little darker, but that's different from black colored stool. Common causes of bleeding that we see when people come into the hospital is ulcers in the stomach or in the duodenum, which is the first portion of the small bowel. Esophageal varices. Esophageal varices are conditions that can come from liver disease and it's similar to the veins that we have on the back of our hand, but they're in the food pipe and they get bigger and bigger when people have liver disease and they burst open and cause quite severe bleeding. Sometimes cancer can present as GI black stool or bleeding. Sometimes pills get stuck in the esophagus and cause irritation and bleeding. And sometimes when we gag, for other reasons, when we throw up, the act of throwing up cuts the esophagus and it's, a t it's called Mallory Weiss tear. So uh, it's not uncommon when patients come in and they tell me, hey, I threw up a few times. Uh, the last time I threw up, I started seeing blood and I immediately think about this Mallory Weiss tear because something like an infection or something set off the throwing up, but the act of throwing up is so forceful uh, that it causes a cut on the inside. So those are common causes. I have some photographs in there of what it looks like. So we take a camera, we go down what we call upper endoscopy, and there's things that we find. We find the uh, varicose veins uh, in the uh, esophagus. Sometimes we find a ulcer, and I have a photograph of here. The ulcer can sometimes be spurting blood, sometimes there's a clot sitting on it, sometimes there's a dark spot sitting on it. All of these tell me uh, that that's the cause of the black stool or throwing up of blood that we're talking about, which is what I'm defining as upper GI bleeding. Common causes, as I said, are uh, ulcers and, is of, and is esophageal varices and, is, and inflammation of the esophagus from acid reflux can cause also bleeding. There is an infection called H. pylori. H. pylori is an infection that we get either because we, in the course of life, we pick it up by eating or drinking something. Uh, it's very common in more underdeveloped countries. In US, uh, the instance is probably about 30% of the population will have H. pylori, whereas uh, in places like India, etc., it's much higher in the 70-80% uh, range or maybe even higher. The H. pylori is a bug and it sits there. Many times it does nothing. Sometimes it causes inflammation. Sometimes it causes ulcer disease. So we check for that in all patients that come in. There are things though that can make things worse with when people have bleeding from say a cut or H. pylori or taking ibuprofen or inflammation in the esophagus. And those include if you have one has associated liver disease. Liver disease does a lot of weird things in the body and one of the things it does is makes the blood thinner. So if there's something that's bleeding, blood runs out faster. The same phenomenon can happen with liver disease and other causes where there's a cells called platelets. Platelets are cells in our blood and whenever there's a cut, 
these platelets rush and plug up the cut. That's how the bleeding stops. And if the platelet count is low for a number of different reasons, one can have more bleeding. We also use blood thinners such as Xeralto, Eliquis, Coumadin, and also antiplatelet agents like Clopidogrel or Plavix. These things can make GI bleeding worse, and we work in the hospital in trying to correct that and to address that in conjunction with trying to stop GI bleeding. As I mentioned, you know, medications that can uh, cause bleeding include aspirin, other things like ibuprofen, naprosil, Aleve, all of these things that I have listed here need to be kept in mind. I try, generally try to discourage our patients to uh, avoid those if possible and try to take something like Tylenol as a first line. I talked about bismuth uh, uh, or peptobismol, uh, you know, iron, things like that that can color the stool darker, but that's not making it black. There has been a slight increase in risk of GI bleeding with some drug groups such as antidepressants which are commonly called SSRIs. Uh, so there's some slight increase when people are on that from, from a number of different mechanisms. So what do we do as our initial assessment when you come in? I think it's important to really dig into it to understand these aspects. Are you taking these medications? Uh, has, has this happened before? Uh, uh, are you feeling dizzy, short of breath, uh, difficulty breathing? This gives me an idea if the blood count has gone too low. If the blood count really drops, uh, uh, then the brain doesn't get enough blood, the lungs don't get enough blood, the tissues don't get enough blood or oxygen, and that causes these symptoms. So anytime you feel dizzy, in conjunction with black stool or blood in the stool, or you're throwing up blood, that's always a real red flag. When you come in, practitioners do what is called orthostatic blood pressure measurement, which includes getting your blood pressure when you lie down and getting it when you sit up. And if there's a big change in that blood pressure, it tells us that you've lost a lot of blood. Typically what's defined as a massive or a bigger bleed is about a, a drop in blood count by about two grams. Normally the hemoglobin in our body runs something in the range of 13. So if you were running at a 12, 13 before and you've dropped a couple of grams, that's fairly significant, if it's hap especially if it's happened over a short period of time. Hey, by the way, I'm talking about this from a standpoint of more acute or more bigger bleeding that happens right away. There are other causes that actually cause the blood to drip out uh, slowly and we'll cover that in a later post. Those include things like arteriovenous malformations, a hiatal hernia that's rubbing up and down, but that's an entirely different discussion. This is more big blood, big bleed that's rushing out. The second thing that uh, uh, we can do when you, uh, when you come in to see us in the office or in the emergency room or in the hospital includes uh, sometimes putting a tube down and into the stomach and not endoscopy, but just a plastic tube uh, or an NG tube was what we call lavage the stomach and see if there's blood coming out. That gives us an immediate sense if there's a bleed that's in the stomach. It's important to have IV fluids, IV access, making sure that the blood stays up, making sure the blood can get thickened. Sometimes, or many times, we start a medicine called omeprazole or one of those medicines in that group to help with ulcer healing. Endoscopic therapy within the first 24 hours is, I think, going to be important because that's when it's helpful. And what we do in endoscopy is that we, when we look at these areas that are bleeding, we inject something called epinephrine around that area. That epinephrine is an agent that causes the blood vessels to tighten up. And then on top of that, we put a little probe uh, and then use heat or coagulation to seal up that blood vessel. Sometimes we use clips. Uh, and if there is varices that we talked about that are bleeding in the esophagus, we use something called banding that sucks these varices and actually puts a little rubber band around it. Very rarely, if we can't get it with the camera, we have to go through the groin or through the artery here uh, to uh, plug up the artery from the inside. It's called using interventional radiology and super rarely one needs to have surgery. 
I think as we talked about other accessory factors in terms of making sure the other medical conditions are managed well and the blood is kept right are important principles in managing GI bleeding. So therefore, in summary, I think what I want you to take home, the big take homes are, if you see black stool or you're throwing up blood, that's always a red sign or a red flag. In addition to that, if you're feeling dizzy, tired, weak, uh, or confused, that takes it to the next level and you need immediate attention. Call our office, call uh, or go to the ER, depending on the acuity of the situation. The third aspect of it is that medications uh, that can cause ulcers, such as this ibuprofen, you know, uh, naproxen, etc., probably need to be avoided or minimized as much as possible within the scope of what we're doing. Lastly, I think continued attention to follow up uh, of medical advice and following up, I think, is important so that we can continue to keep track of this condition and prevent recurrence. So this is about big bleeding or acute GI bleeding and we'll talk a little bit more about conditions that can cause slower leaks of blood. Thank you. I hope you got something out of it. As always, email, call. Uh, uh, we love to keep talking to you and educating you about this.